Destroying the rainforest to make plywood is like burning the Mona Lisa to cook your lunch. in Ecuador and I was on a birding trip and I noticed all these logging trucks that were coming out one after the other with big old growth logs over a century old. So it was alarming. I found out that the group that was doing the cutting was this group in Desa Petrosa and with just a small amount of research I realized that they were making plywood out of the rainforest and exporting it to the United States and that I could buy it on the shelves of my local Home Depot. Get more with more from the Home Depot. You can do more. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. It was easy to put two and two together. To verify it, I went to the Home Depot and I was able to find they've tattooed the side of each piece of plywood made in Ecuador and Desa Petrosa. And when I made the connection, I sent an email to Home Depot and said that I realized that their product is being sold in your stores and that I'd like to talk to them. Of course, the CEO, chairman, and the vice president of sustainability, their email isn't public. So I sent it to the CEO and the chairman, Craig Manier. I did Craig.Manier at HomeDepot.com and the VP, Ron.Jarvis at HomeDepot.com and uh, waited three weeks and didn't hear anything. So on a Friday afternoon, about 5.30, I thought, well, I'm gonna try Craig underscore Manier at HomeDepot.com and Ron underscore Jarvis. The next morning, a Saturday morning, I got an email back. It was from Ron Jarvis copying the CEO chairman saying, Craig, I'll talk to Brian. We made an arrangement by email to talk that following Monday. Hello, this is Brian. Hey, Brian, this is Ron Jarvis at HomeDepot. How are you? Hi, Ron, thanks for calling. Certainly. I wanted to talk to you about specifically your wood relationship with Indessa Batrosa. Okay. I told Iran the plywood that they're getting is coming out of the critically endangered rainforest and that they're sourcing from a bad actor, Indessa Batrosa. What could I tell you about what I know that would help you determine what your relationship would be with this company? It would be uh, just where you were and where you saw the wood coming out and how you knew they were going to Indessa. But I asked him a question. They say that they would no longer accept products out of non-FSC certified old growth forest out of the Amazon. I said, does this include the western slope of the Andes because that's not really in the Amazon basin? Well, it really helps me if you can just send over a map. He said, well, he would have to see where it is on a map. Ecuador is one of the most biodiverse countries in the planet. It's jeopardized by deforestation, forest degradation, a huge expansion of extractive activities such as oil, mining, palm oil, and other non-sustainable ways of destroying the rainforest. The most threatened ecosystem in Ecuador is the Choco. It's a rainforest like the Amazon basin, exactly like the Amazon basin but in the other side of the Andes, in the Pacific side. The Choco rainforest is a humid forest located mostly from the Pacific coast of Colombia to about half of the Ecuadorian coast. It's the most biodiverse places in the world. 
The tropical forest is immensely diverse. Just where we are in the Canande watershed in northwest Ecuador, we've identified 300 tree species. The Tuco has the highest number of unique bird species of any region in the world. It's not only bird species, but one of the main species is the brown-headed spider monkey. And the wood that's being harvested is the preferred food of this spider monkey. But in addition to that, there's a spectacle bear, there's jaguar. In some ways, we don't even know what's in there. There's frogs that continue to be discovered. There's beetles, praying mantises, and moths, species that get overlooked. But when you see them, they're mind-blowing. You wonder, why are we destroying it? The deforestation in the tropical countries is one of the highest in the world. From the 1950s to the mid-1970s, it was booming expansion of banana exports from Ecuador, and they just had the forest to make banana plantations. When you look at the western slope of the Andes 50 years ago, the profusion of species ranged up and down the western slope. Because of the logging pressures and agricultural pressures, there's just 3% of intact forest left. This tropical rainforest is supposed to be the most threatened rainforest on Earth. The, the animal species that evolved are found nowhere else. Ecosystems are like a human body. Everything has to work together and perfectly. You have so many plants, so many insects, bacteria, fungi, birds, mammals, frogs, everything that are all related together and each other, depending on each other. That's why it's so important to take care in general an ecosystem. All the change that depend to that animal plant is going to collapse. We need to preserve the rainforest. If the Chocó region is destroyed, we have a lot of species extinction. Humankind cannot survive in the future without biodiversity. The most important biodiversity reserve in the planet is the rainforest. Now we're down to the last 3% and you see these logging trucks coming out and you realize they're coming for all of it. Much of the deforestation and devastation of these critical areas has been at the hands of Endesa Petrosa. Endesa Petrosa is part of a vertically integrated supplier of wood products that builds the roads, extracts the wood, makes the plywood, and exports it to the United States. Are you aware that they no longer have an FSC certificate? I was told that the forest that they're buying is FSC certified, and my major, my main concern is the forest. He said that the important thing for them is that the wood comes out of an FSC certified forest. I want to read you exactly what that is. It says, a product can be certified by the Forest Stewardship Council, FSC, which means it meets the gold standard ethical production. The wood is harvested from forests that are responsibly managed, socially beneficial, environmentally conscious, and economically viable. Certifications like FSC are sort of a shortcut symbol so the customers feel like everything's copacetic. They lost their certificate because they have no management plan. They were in violation of FSC rules. They had no management plan for quota for endangered species. Basically, they're just taking the wood out. If we can show you that Indessa is a bad actor, what kind of responsibility do you have to, I guess, to, to y'all's reputation and stuff to reconcile that situation? Yeah, if we find that you know, they're buying from the Amazon Basin wood that's not FFB certified and sending to us, then we would terminate this contract. Indessa Petrosa has a very spotty record allegedly extracting wood beyond the boundaries of their contractual limit without regard for the environment. They are accused of violence and aggression and intimidation in indigenous areas. 
El grupo Durini inició en 1997 una guerra a muerte contra los campesinos que vivían en el bloque 10 del patrimonio forestal ecuatoriano para expulsarlos de sus tierras. Nosotros somos seis dueños, somos dueños de 350 hectáreas en el cual pues como no les quise vender por varias ocasiones que estos señores me exigían que les venda, eh, el día miércoles 25 de octubre del año 2000 a las 4 de la tarde. Eh, pues a, a mí me mandó la empresa a secuestrar, me tuvieron detenido y amarrado en la montaña durante eje tres días, estuve pues, me, me cogieron día miércoles a las 4 de la tarde y me soltaron el día viernes en el cual fui eh, torturado y obligado a salir de la propiedad eh, enviados por la compañía Botrosa. Botrosa expulsó a los pobladores del bosque y de sus casas, aplicando violencia y tortura, y finalmente la destrucción de sus viviendas. Eh, aquí especialmente Botrosa, que está acabando, como ustedes pueden ver aquí, todo está arruinado, este terreno queda inservible por 20 años. Lo que están haciendo es un concepto llamado Cut, Cash and Lie. They come in, harvest the forest only thinking about their immediate raw material needs, but not thinking about the management of the forest and how the forest can continue to produce raw material sustainably for the long term. It doesn't contribute to sustainability. It doesn't contribute to a sustainable distribution of profits. So it's a typical extractive company. It's bad for the environment and it's bad for social distribution. They took this area 50 years ago and it was one of the most amazing rainforests in the planet and now it's nothing. As one group has said, they've been plundering the western slope of the Andes for 40 years. Their main customer is Home Depot. Certified or not, it needs to be sustainable and not damaging critical habitat, is what you're telling me. It would need to be sustainable. We're definitely not going to promote, endorse, or encourage unsustainable forestry practices. As the world's largest home improvement retailer, the Home Depot has always understood that our impact is entwined with our identity. Every day, we look for new ways to change the way our company, our industry, and our customers think about materials. When a company says it's sustainable, what it can mean is that the company is trying to portray itself as being sustainable. It's a company that manages a number of sustainability issues quite well, and they have greenhouse gas emissions reduction targets, and are certainly taking sustainability seriously. But I do think wood sourcing is an area where there hasn't been a lot of motion from Home Depot in recent years. They were pretty early to the game among major retailers in terms of establishing a wood sourcing policy and made pretty big strides in 1999. But in the more than 20 years since then, um, they've lagged behind their peers. When you look at their sustainability reporting, they're very specific about how they say they visit the various locations on their supply chain to make sure they are keeping up with Home Depot's ethos. And they mention all of the countries, but for some reason, Ecuador is left out of that. I do a wood survey probably every two to three years, depending on the category. Some of the categories we keep a much tighter watch, and hardwood plywood is one that we watch extremely close. If Home Depot had investigated their chain of sourcing, they would see what I have seen, these large logs that are obviously old growth that could not have come from a sustainably managed plantation or forest. You can see large old growth tree trunks waiting to be processed into plywood. It's obvious they're pulling from a particular location that is not a plantation. It's not an FSC certified forest. How does that job with their sustainability policy? If they had done their due diligence, then they would have known that their source in Desipetrosa is destroying endangered forest with century old trees. 
what should be my next step? You want more proof? I can send you pictures. That really won't help me much because it could be coming from an FCC certified forest. Uh, what I need to know is where you were when you saw this and uh, mark those areas. Okay. And but then I can go in from there and find out from them so if they're purchasing from there and how much and, right. and so on. Well, let me get some uh, evidence together for you and I will email it to you directly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. I know you're busy, and uh, I wish you a, a, a good week. All right, Brian. You do. Thanks for the information. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. I did send an email to them with a picture of the logging trucks and exact location and said, this is where it is, and I never heard back from them. I sent the email in June of 2018. It's 2022 now, and nothing's changed. It's not a difficult ask we're making of Home Depot. Stop sourcing your plywood from the rainforest. There's many battles that can be fought about preserving the environment, but this is a relatively easy one. You can not do this one thing, and it'll go a long way in helping preserve one of the most wonderful biodiverse hotspots on Earth. We share only one planet. The most important endowment of the planet is biodiversity. Humankind cannot survive in the future without biodiversity. If we can get people to recognize that if we can maintain forests and manage forests, there's a long-term economic motor there. There's a long-term economic benefit that can be derived from that. It used to be that only environmentally focused investors were talking about these issues, and now everybody is talking about these issues. It's a sea change, really. The large institutional asset managers like BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard are now taking more active roles. Sustainability concerns are going to be key to maintaining their reputation, and these sensitivities are highest among the largest and most important demographics. This is something that we're seeing in younger generations, and I think those trends are going to continue, and companies are well served to get ahead of them. I still go to Home Depot. I was there like three days ago at Home Depot buying something else. So I'm not indicting the entire company based on sourcing of this one product. I think this is an easy win for Home Depot. It's, it's a win-win for all of us. For the consumer, we're able to have confidence that the wood sourcing comes from a sustainable practice. In the long run, they will be comforted by the fact that they know that we have more trust in them as a consumer.